Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to, I want to say, another episode of the Chichi Natives. Um, but actually, welcome to another launch by the Chichi Natives. And today we have the incomparable Tenji Swane, who wrote All Gomorrahs Are the Same. I mean, if you don't have a copy of this book yet, I don't know what I can do with you because I've done something with myself and I actually have a copy of this book. I am so excited to introduce Tenji and so on, and I am going to just read uh, the, the bio, but before I get to that, the Tokonolo, how are you doing, Boo? I see we're matching. Yes, we are. We're the Cheeky Natives. I'm so excited. Um, I mean, I have been looking forward to this since I finished the book, like months Listen. ago. Um, and I'm just wait, lo looking forward to more and more conversation. I just feel like I'm just going to tell Tenji, like, can we have like a, a monthly just check in because, you know, I want to talk about this aspect of the book. So I'm really, really thrilled to be here today. Um, and I like have the <laughs> super biggest crush on Tenji. So like, if I'm not able to control myself today, like just blame it oh, on the crush. Wow. Okay. I think Tenji is used to this because I swear everybody is crushing on Tenji, you know, so I'll let you crash today and then like I'll crash I'll on our next So I'm gonna read <laughs> Tenji's bio yeah, and um, thank you. I feel you know, you know what it is, you know what it is. <laughs> but I'm so excited to welcome you, Tenji. I think that uh, it's important for people to know the kind of company that we're in today. And uh, I want you guys to know that the author of All Gomorrahs Are the Same is Tenji Mswane, who holds a master's degree in anthropology and is currently a PhD student with the SWAP, the Society Work and Politics Institute at the University of the Vodvatistrand. Mswane is an experienced gender researcher and retired queer activist and the author of today's book, All Gomorrahs Are the Same. Welcome to the Chigi Natives. Thank you for having me. That's not bad. Thank you so much for having me. And hi, everyone. Thank you. And thank you for everyone joining us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, we're really excited to have you here with us for the launch of All Gomorrahs Are the Same. Before we get into, you know, the really meaty bits of this book and this conversation, um, we'd like to ask Tenji to just read to us from All Gomorrahs Are the Same, just as an entry point, you know, so that you can enter the book with us and you know what to expect in the book. So Tenji, may we ask you to take it away and read to us from page one, um, chapter one, Tulani chapter. Right. I made a mistake of leaving it somewhere, but let me go and come back. Um, all right. Um, Utulan, we did not bury my daughter. My mother does not remember how old she was when she buried the first of her children. I have not yet buried a child. I have waited on that door every day from the day she left. She left a long time ago. Perhaps it was the day we forced her to grow too fast, the day of her first day at crash. She was too young to start crash, then she was too young to go to class one, but she did. Her mother applauded, she received it, worked harder. My daughter is learning how to leave from her first day in school. By the time her body left, disappeared from our lives, she had been, she had been missing to herself for a long time. I watched my daughter leave. You shouldn't think yeah. folks the way I just did. That was my closely thing to do. Sure. Okay. Um, we still need to have a conversation after that, or is just everyone going to go buy the book? Oh, oh. we've lost Tenju. Okay, we're going to wait for Tenju. Tenju. We'll, yeah, we'll uh, wait for them to come back, and then we'll resume the conversation. But I suppose, Alma, in the meantime, um, like when you read that first bit, right? I remember, like, sometimes I sample books like this. I just read the first page and see if I want to get into it. Like when I read that, it was packed with so much that I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, oh, Sorry change is back. That. I need to just switch off all the Okay. Um, so. Hi, sorry about that, sorry. No, that's fine. Um, 
Yeah, I, I was I was asking Alma about her reflections about entering the book, right? So when you read the first page, what were some of the things that were going through your mind? Because I was just like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, I'm about to go in for a ride. And because I don't know who is she, who's my daughter, why she's not buried. I just don't know anything, right? So what are some of your reflections? So I mean, for me, the it was it was quite jarring, right? To to read about the loss of somebody who is not buried. I, I think of like a lot of um, African ideas around death and funeral rites are also so predicated around what we do with the bodies of those who we love who've passed, you know? So going to bath the person and dress them and, and, and those kind of funeral rites are so important. And so what does it mean to not bury somebody that you love, but to not have them be there? And, I already just knew that it was going to be lit from those first three lines. I was like, okay, let me just prepare myself because I don't know what Tenju is going to do, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. It, that It's just going to be a lot. Um, and so I'm always curious around ideas of like death and grief and, and passing. And, and potentially that's just because I, I had both my grandparents pass uh, in close duration to each other earlier this year. So my grandmother died first, then my grandfather followed it like two weeks later, almost to the day. And so I'm, I'm very curious. I think my interest in grief and death and those kinds of rituals have been peaked, you know? Um, and that, that was obviously just the, the interest that, that was spurred by this book. Tenji, I suppose the first question to ask you is like, after like reading the book, I was like, all Gomorrahs are the same. Mm -hmm. And then I have to admit that like, I know it's in the book. We, we figured it out in the book, like, but the penny really mm -hmm. dropped when one day I was watching Gomorrah and I was like, uh -huh. oh my gosh, all Gomorrahs are the same. Yes, this is exactly <laughs> what it is. So I suppose... Um, why is the book called All Gomorrahs Are the Same? What are some of your meditations on the title of your book? Um, I didn't meditate on it a lot at the time. Um, I think I changed the titles a few times. Um, but there was something about... My, this, this, the protagonist's life and all the things that she had searched for um, and her relationship. So her friend reminds her of a verse that speaks about a new Jerusalem, right? And she responds, um, without saying this to her friend, but she responds that all Komoras are the same, essentially. Um, and I think as she returns, because she says this very late on in the book, um, as she's about to return to Joburg, um, and is piecing together her life and is piecing together all the ways in which she has distanced herself from other people's struggles and, 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 and or found different languages for it um, and has distanced herself from her the ways in which she has felt like she's been a Sodom. Her personal life has been a Sodom. Um, and she doesn't necessarily face it but she, because she's in love with this last woman that she speaks to as well, you know, queer things to do, fall in love. So she's in love and she sees how they've both been seeking and searching. And this one woman chose one thing and she chose another. And she still feels like they're both trapped and the Yafana type of thing. And so she's returning with a Yazu Yafana. Um, but also then it speaks to them in the biblical context of what it means to feel like a sort of for her identity, even though she never has direct conversations with it. It's a theme throughout the book, what it feels like for people like some of us to be amasoto, makululele you know. So I think that's the journey of the title. These are, there are layers to the grief in this book, right? Um, there, is a, there is a personal grief that Nakosi experiences, but there's also the grief of the people around her. And, and often mm -hmm. when you think about, about that grief, there, there are ways in which we can name our grief. So this person passed away. I know that the physical realm has been broken. And so I, I'm grieving their passing, but then there is an unplaced grief 
that we explore in this book and the and it's multi-layered like i'm saying there, there's the grief that we see in not knowing what has happened to somebody that you love but there's a personal grief that makosi experiences as she has to as she navigates the grief. i guess what what the talk and i were speaking about queer grief right the grief of yourself the loss of of relationships and familial acceptance and what you give versus what you gain and so i wanted you to just speak to those layers of grief that you explore in the book first and in the personal of makosi but also okay i think we've lost tingy is it just me totally you're muted yeah, it's me. It's yeah, I can see Tenji is reconnecting. I wait to can calibola la hori homophobic uh internet. Oh, it always does this. But again, we will persevere. Friend, I, I think that we have to uh just fast about this. Because the homophobia <laughs> is at all time highs. Okay, yes. Tenji is like the queer yay. gods are showing up again. Tenji, can you hear us? <laughs> Yes, I can. I keep hearing you, but I see myself. I see the your answer is Lila Bola that but I've been here, yeah. so I did hear your question. Um, okay. about the griefs and the losses that Makosi goes through and um, yeah. So I I think up until I think the moment where Makosi has the realization of Gomorrah's being the same, her life feels like a constant loss um, of everything around her. Um, it feels like a constant, it's not even a pattern, an exchange of losing yourself to become a part of the system. Um, and I think there's parts of Makosi that struggles and fights what loss and grief are. Um, for a while. I think Makosi does that. And I think that's part of the, the person that we're all in love with of, um, sorry, of the Makosi who is angry. I think she's struggling with loss. She's struggling with what to do when she's losing herself, when she's losing her language, when she's losing connection with her mother, with her father, with her brothers, with her surroundings, when everybody keeps moving even for her life, right? And people lose relations and things and she doesn't know what to do with that. And even just the boarding school for her is a loss of where she could have been. Every time she comes back, she realizes, she recognizes a loss. Um, I think there's a part where she speaks about a weekend uniform and everybody's like her. Huh? Um, so, and, and for me, it's such, it's a conversation about all the things that we gain when we become the people that we have now become about was cool missing and the whatnots. So what is the what is the thing that's been traded? Um, and then that makes it hard for Makosi to lose humans. And she believes she loses humans. Um, and there are numerous humans throughout the book that she loses lovers. Um, she loses lovers a lot. She doesn't know then what to do with with what that feels like and Makosi runs away from that. Um, and, and that's a human thing to do, um, because, you know, when you, when you keep losing, it's, a, it's trauma. So I think I'm having an, a, a conversation about what it means to be the people that we are, what, how much of ourselves we've lost, um, and how much of ourselves we've run away from and the types of conversations we've run away from about the type of people we become when we keep losing, um, and how we impact the people in, 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 in each other. Everybody loves Makosi, um, is what I know from social media. But Makosi hurts a lot of people in her journeys of loss. She's such a, yes, she's beautiful. She's, but my God, all those women that she just, I'm out and I'm out and I'm out and doesn't even like, what is a goodbye? Um, like, why don't those people deserve a goodbye? Why do you struggle with loss so much? And then you leave people without, without even an announcement-ish. Not that death has an announcement, but man, if you knew what losing Unombu meant, or so yeah, sorry if I'm giving things away to people who haven't read it, but if you know what losing Nombu felt to you, when you just, when you, well, when you just, and that's your life, and because people love you, they must, as if they haven't lost, you know? So I love her. And she speaks to parts of the, the people we become when we lose. 
but oh, there's a, there's something that we must do with the griefs, and I think that's part of her problem. Um, I don't think she faces the grief. I think, and you know, we go things like that are okay, but like we don't live in, we don't live in isolation. We don't live in silos. And I I'm interested in the I'm very interested in the conversation of what does non is actions and being do to everyone around her and how do they engage what they've done to her because also there's kind of like her not assumes people in her life homophobic you know and she assumes because that's what the world has taught her and that's what the loss has taught her and so she projects onto people and loses them in the process and when we heal and when we're and becoming and becoming the people who watch us become and unbecome um Ooh, what do they, what must they do with that loss? All the versions of ourselves that of us that they lose also, because it's fine that we can be numerous people and I'm a different person every day, and I can disappear when I want, but I'm not living as an island that affects yeah. people. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think that. I mean, I I think it's interesting what 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 you talk about because I've been so interested about like. I've just decided maybe what I should do is do my PhD on queer griefs and looking at literature and how the ways in which we grieve. Cause I think it's such an interesting topic for me. But what interests me about Makosi though is, is this idea of like, as you say, what do we lose when we become ourselves, right? And sort of what is the games or the bartering the give or take that we have to play with ourselves. And one thing that I'm constantly thinking about is like, like we only get to see Makosi at the end, right, of 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 her acceptance of herself. But before Makosi gets to this point, there's a lot of grief that she's experiencing, right? And this mm -hmm. grief is even compounded by the fact that like now she has language. And this language mm -hmm. sort of, you know, mm -hmm. she can tell, she can say what she's feeling and what's happening, but she there's still a loss that I think she experiences that is unexplained and a loss that sits in our bodies as, as, as queer people, that we're constantly navigating and grieving the ways in which relations could have been or the relationships with ourselves could have been. So if we're not out, uh -huh. we're grieving our, ourselves, but if we are out, we may be grieving loss of familial relationship. And I think Makosi allows us to wrestle quite a bit with that. And I wanted to know what are some of your reflections on this idea of like us as queer people constantly having to occupy a precarious space of loss. Okay. So I want to also say, Wuti, um, I have, I engage in two very different conversations with book, this book. So my first answer is the everybody answer. Um, it's the answer that I would give to my mother if my mother was asking this question about loss. It, uh, you know, it's very important, Mama, that you know it matters how we exist in the world and how we hurt each other. The intellectual conversation um, that I still like is Ngiti for, and I think this is why I write fictionally because I am a scholar of a particular of anthropology and all of its problematicness. And one of my like fascinations with anthropology is the, the type of African anthropologist who speaks about the African um, novelist as, a, as an ethnographer, right? Because, and there's something for me about the fact that we don't have the language, yes, in, DC, in the proper way to, to explain these things, but we know how to describe these things. So for me, Makosi doesn't know what it's like to watch a queer life being grieved. For, for one. So I think that's a thing that even though she's lost all of these people in her life, lives like hers are not worthy of grief. So she can exist in and out and she knows that life continues. I think that's that's a thing that she's very aware of. She's very aware of the times when she must navigate between her queer self existing less when she's with um, Dumi's mother and she, and she counts the things that feminize her and she goes brazing by zeal. So she has then the relationship, which is a relationship that she has with her mother and food. There's a time when Marco Sazani is, is wondering when does she ever tell her mother about 
Come on, that, that white girl, the white girl in the bathroom who goes, here's how you insert a tampon, right? And those are the numerous deaths that have been that have been going unmourned throughout her life. Um and and I think I think there's a thing about not and so I also think she doesn't see herself existing long term. And this is a thing, like a theme about loss that I don't know what to do with about how do how do queer people exist to be 60 and 70 in South Africa when I don't I don't know where they are. I know that queerness, so I know intellectually we go, of course, queerness is African, and that's an old debate, and I'm tired of this because we know this. Um, but I, where are they? Because what I definitely know is we're definitely dead by our 40s, 50, 50s. So if Makosi is having numerous deaths throughout her life and watching herself not being mourned, it's, it's a part of the queer, we do this, even in the ways that queer people self-harm, we're so, and we have such a relation. Oh, I love queer poetry. Um, I, I'm like right now I think of even Conega's work. I, I love how queer people write um, Vangi's work. There's a way in which we just, and it's not the same relationship with death that Zola has. Um, queer people have a relationship with death that's romantic, that's I will form myself a placard, I will remember ourselves. That's how we speak about death, because we know that our deaths never matter. So we want to remember, we say say her name, we say we say these things. Whereas Zola speaks about death, like, hello, hello, like it's a, I could die, man, because you know what, I'm memorable. Um, you're not, so I can approach death in a tag. So, like that's how, so for me, that's a thing. And then, yeah, and which deaths matter and which death, yeah, it's a, intellectually, it's a, it's an entire thing about queer deaths. Um, and even just watching the deaths that we've been watching and mourning in the year, yo, it's a long thing. It would be a long thing that's a honolo. Um, but I, 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 yeah, yeah, we don't know what it looks like for us to be mourned. And so we write romantically and beautifully about it and release anthologies and uh, we fall apart on the TL and oh, it's cute. Mm -hmm. Just before um, I um, Alma ask a question, I want to say, um, as you're speaking, I'm reminded of Sarah Hamed, who um, in the cultural politics of emotion says um, that queer lives are ungrievable losses, right? Because that's essentially what you're getting at. It's the fact that we need to be admitted as lives in order for us to be mourned, right? So people don't think that our deaths, are, our lives are worth anything. How much more um, about our... Um, our deaths. So like, it's yeah. it's like these meditations that I'm constantly thinking about, about like, mm. you're completely correct. Like, okay, so we romanticize it and then what? We'll still not be remembered. Mm. We'll make shirts. A few of us will make it as names on shirts. Mm. I am interested in the relationships between the women in this book, particularly between right? There is a commentary on the intergenerational relationships between Black women, but also how there's almost a generational loss of sisterhood, right? So you see the ways in which Duduzile interacts with her sister is so different to the ways in which her children are able to conceptualize her and relate to her. And in, and in that loss or in that chasm of relating that exists, there's also this replication of trauma, right? So the ways in which older black women were traumatized is then replicated in their relationships with younger black women in their lives. And I'm I'm interested in your meditations around mm -hmm. that, what this intergenerational relationship between black women looks like and what this generational loss of, of I guess what I can call sisterhood looks like in those relationships. I think that I'm asking whether here I want to insert um, the word loss, or I want to use the word miss, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm forming a new relationship with words. Um, and one of the things that I'm beginning to believe is we don't lose people. People transcend, people move on. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, but so I think I want to go here in the, I think 
for me, that's one of one of the things that uh, that takes Uma Kosi on the spirals that she goes on is she thinks she's lost them. Um, and there are times where she's trying to hold on to them. Um, I, for me, like a converse, a chat that I, I, I can't shake it in my body. And every time I have this engagement, the time when Makosi speaks to her mother about a trajectory, and her mother goes, "Ye in the trajectory, like why, how you've done, you've done, you've done what you can, right?" Um, and she believes that she has lost, and I think. And and it's and and loss is a thing that she's familiar with. I don't think she's familiar with finding people again. Like, I think this is part of why she leaves so much. You know, um, is that she's not familiar. She's not familiar with people staying. She's not. She's not familiar with. You know. Um, and I think the very thing about queerness, yo, there isn't a people who move more than queer people. Queer people will live in seven. And they just and it's like oh we love travel, but you're in Cape Town and then you're here. You're here. You're just like, and you're leaving relations as you go, and so you become familiar with this. You know, the ones you find again, find, and so, and family is the one thing that she just she can't obviously disappear from them. The ways in which she disappears from everyone else, and I think she struggles with believing that she's lost um, these women who are all trying to show her in very many ways that she's she's not lost to them, and they're not lost to her. Um, and I think a thing that influences her and the thing about loss is that it affects us traumatically. And I think what happens with Unombu is a thing that affects her psyche around loss because she feels bad about the things that she would have said and the things that she wouldn't have said um, and the things lost to regret um, versus, and it, it, it's such a, it's such a, and yes, it's because of it, but the ways in which these women are constantly trying to pull her back and put her back. And the amount of work that they have to do in going, you're not a thing. You know, sometimes um, like there's things that yeah, black parents say in like weird ways, like I'm, there's no pain to throw away a, a child, you know? And I mean, dog, that's painful. Why are you thinking about a pain about me? Um, but in the ways in which they have learned language, that's an expression of you're here to stay. I don't know if you've ever had that conversation with a friend um, and mm. a friend is going through and they're feeling bad and you're like, dog, I'm going nowhere. I choose you and mm. I choose you and I choose you. And the language is different, right? Um, and the approach and all of these things. So they're constantly trying to do that work and nothing, their language and her language are not meeting each other. And that's, I think, the thing that Makosi was seeking for the whole time. And this is why the old Komoras are the same, because I think after that final return and she pieces together her life and her lovers and whatever happens to her when she goes to the ocean, she, she, I think she, she, I think if there was to be a second book, she would come back and she would, she would probably say, I didn't lose them. I think if there was to be a, if, you know, it would never, but I think she would have a different conversation with us and go, I didn't lose them. Um, but I, I it's, there's a, um, there's a thing about the people we become when we move to migrant cities. I'm also having that conversation to, with queer people um, about the places in which, the spaces in which we believe we can exist and how temporary and fickle those spaces are. Um, I mean, if we think about the looting last week, cities go up like this. The places we get to call our safe spaces, our Johannesburgs, we sit and we're like this when a looting is happening because you know it's fickle, right? In rural areas, it's you're stuck with these people and you're stuck and you're working through it. And we move around sometimes with, like again, because that's what we've known. And we need to create communities for each other and with each other where we know staying and we know, we know, we know what it means to build and to work because I wish Makosi had done that. I think that's a, a very, she leaves, she leaves, she leaves. And so she thinks um, that about people and she assumes that about people. And that's the world, that, that's that's our world. We can't stay also in my Lokshin, you know? Um, her mother could stay in Lokshin, she couldn't. Her sister could mm. stay in Lokshin, she couldn't. So we're in, then we come to these fickle migrant cities where if we die, eh, I mean, yeah. You, um, I mean, so yeah, I don't think black women lose each other. I think. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm waiting for Tenju to oh. finish all. Okay, yes, time. okay. Then you know, let me finish. You said you know, we don't lose no, black women. I don't think we lose each other. I think we miss each other. I think the mm. system has taught us places of missing each other. You know, for me, it's like the analogy. What about those grids, those cow grids in rural areas? And have you seen a, a, a city woman come to try walk on those things in, heel, in heels? And it's like, a, you're going to get to your destination, but like you're missing where to stand. Um, and you are struggling and you look like a joke, but you're missing to this place, to the context, to the... Mm. So it's the missing each other points. I mean, I love that, how powerful that is, right? Like that we miss mm. each other. And also this is owing to the structural systems mm. that we find ourselves in, right? So it's not necessarily mm. that... Um, we're missing each other because we want to, but we're missing each other because the system in many instances was designed for us to miss each other. But what I was also interested in is sort of community and otherness, right? Um, I think about Makosi's aunt and I think about Makosi's relationship and I feel that men, um, much of their relationship like was the way it was because they found each other in the otherness that they existed to society. And I wanted to to speak a little bit about that, right? About like how like we sort of as 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 queer people we cling on to people who may seem like they're pariahs in society because the otherness sort of connects us. But even in that otherness, there's no like real authenticity. Makosi doesn't really have the conversation with her aunt about where she is at life and what she's doing, but she sort of finds this like little bit of comfort knowing that there is at least one person who understand the concept, the context of existing outside of this space, right? And mm -hmm. I'm going to hold on to that. So I was really interested in, in, in that relationship and commentary on otherness. So a thing for me that's interesting there is Makosi doesn't feel like the, the other people, because she's attracted to other people. Um, her relationship with... Um, What's her name? Uzama. Her relationship to Uzama. At first, she thinks Uzama and her are different in the same way, right? And it breaks her when Uzama is suddenly undifferent. When Uzama returns to the world, like, how dare you return to Christianity? Who taught you that? We're different. Um, and then she's attracted to her last lover. Utumi is a person who walks up to her in the lawns and is weird, right? Um, and she's constantly trying to find weird people. And throughout that, she's a thing she is terrible at is communication. Not only did she struggle to communicate with Unambu, she struggles to communicate with Uzama. She struggles to communicate with Utumi. There were so many things, there were so many times she died in that relationship with that woman. Um, and she loved her. And she had absolutely, she just didn't know how to communicates that I'm losing you and you're a thing I want to stay. Um, and then when the things you want to stay leave anyway, you go, I'm used to loss. Um, the, for me, a thing with Unombu is how she responds to, to, to Nombu's death. The thing... Um, I, I think I disappeared for a minute. But I was saying, Muti, the way that she responds to Nombu's death haunts me. Um, and all, all not having to watch her just move. This, per this person has died. This person's life has ended. You came back, played cards with me like nothing had happened, announced this to this other person in a, and then you move and you leave me in a pack of cards. And how, why is this your relation with loss? Why is this your relation with loss? Um, and then you you go off. Yeah, I think. Oh, she she was. I think, and also because of the otherness and the difference, you don't know how to communicate it. And also, that white girl tells her very early, you can't have this conversation with your mother. And and then the next girl she falls in love with at some point at um, Rhodes, I think it's Letu or something is her name, um, also sort of reinforces 
that you can't you can't let you can't tell so and for makosi some of the violences are big and i and like some of the violences are massive the sexual mangmangs but some of the violence is the thing is the ways in which you get you learn that you are a sodom um and that your existence is to find a gomora and so you never get to say i'm burning in the sodom and that there's people who, are, who can take you out and go you know that sodom is not a universal thing right like you know that there are people who aren't burning um so she doesn't know how to ever communicate who she is because there's been these micro everythings every day you can't communicate your discomfort you can't communicate you can't communicate so even when you find other people you still don't know how to cook. you just you believe sometimes that you can because you love them and you you intend well but you don't have the language um and so you act out in the ways that makosi acts out and um and that that hurts me for her it, it pains me that her inability to cuz man unesingisi enja yo isingisi singa she's out here trying numerous languages but you can't mm. say when it's hurt because the world has told you that people like you again because you're not even humans humans don't hurt like you know humans don't hurt and humans aren't mourned so you you're living life not to you german like you get hurt and you just go with you with you leap with it you leap with it and another hurt you're a non-human um and she feels non-human for a very long time so thinking about makosi's feelings right makosi is yeah. really angry like she's i don't know if i'll answer all of your questions that's <laughs> fine no well we're good we're mm-hmm. good um makosi is really angry right and i think of the the caricature of the the angry black woman you know and and how so much of the anger that black women feel gets gets caricatured but also gets diminished and dismissed right it's almost as though there isn't space for us to express our anger at at all of the injustices that we experience in the world right and makosi is really really angry but i also think that there's a place mm-hmm. that anger has in allowing us to reimagine what society could be right outside of the these these weird templates and frameworks that we have and i and i and i wanted to talk a little bit about that in relation to makosi right um because you've spoken about a lot of the pain that you feel for makosi and i'm curious about just the reimagination that anger could have allowed makosi to do um I think for one drink less um <laughs> less addictions I think she'll be no way healthier with less addictions um anger has a place in the space um anger has a place in the space um we're allowed to get angry at all of the things that are said you are so even with the previous example where somebody can go and we can so if somebody goes so for example say you're you're hella suicidal and your friend's most understanding way of loving you and caring for you is going I'm here and you're staying and I'm here and you're staying and in that moment it feels like whatever it feels like or your mother in however she deals with things she goes I I won't come like into ana both those things can hurt and you can be angry about them I just I don't know whether long term anger is sustainable i think anger consumes a lot um i think anger is distracting i think i think there's a lot of work we need to do for each other as black women and queer women that must be outside of anger i think we deserve kindness amongst each other i think when anger is the only thing that we're consuming 
sometimes when we come into interactions with each other, we don't know how to switch up. Um, I think I find this in activist spaces a lot. That's why I'm a retired activist. Is if we're spending seven, five to six days a week shouting at how much we hate white men and the system and we hate black men every single day, and we're facing it every day, and we're doing that work. The, the one day shift of, oh, we love each other and we're healing work and we're hugging um, isn't, isn't enough. I think the Haitian slave revolt happened in 1804 that was led by black angry women. And that can be used by black men a lot. They will take it and they will run. That is what has happened with numerous revolutions through history where anger is an emotion that I don't know how, but black men will take it and they will run um, and it will be theirs and it, and it works with masculinity better. So anger hurts us um, as queer people. And I, I wish my course would have channeled towards, I don't wanna say I'm gonna be angry, but I've been, as is well, like a kindness and kindness, again, English is not, Ever the word. Mm. I wish she had offered herself a severe type of a kindness. And then the people around, I think having understood that she was in the world existing as non-human, mm. to humanize herself and to humanize the people around her and to humanize her mother and go, my mother is human is why these things happen sometimes. My father is human is why these things happen sometimes. So she, she falls into a dehumanizing act and then she gets angry at herself. And she, like when you, when you are so consumed with anger and being a good person and a good activist and a mang mang and a good this and a good that, you don't allow yourself the time to, to be human. And I think, I think she cheated herself of the fullness of humanity. And I think she, she cheated the people in her life. She didn't allow the people in her, around her. She didn't allow them the decency of understanding what was in her brain as humans, you know. She she felt, and again, like Honola said, that this is a trap. We were trapped into, into the ways in which we engage with each other. Um, I think as smart as she was, she could have gone, this is old. 1804 is old. I'm going to do differently. And what we're going to do is we're going to be human. When Letha Honola fucks up tomorrow, I'm going to go, Yo, a human factor. Because you know why rapists and men come back every time and never get canceled even after sexual and, and like terrible things and can become presidents because everybody goes, they're human. It was a thing in the bathroom. It was a thing in the, we've had Trump and Zuma and Mam Mam because people, everybody went, oh, he's human. Besides the like people denying the actions, people go, it's a human to Thing to her um, and queer people, we don't allow each other that man. We don't allow and black women, we don't allow each other grace and mm. humanity. We're just like, no, you should be right all the fucking damn time. Oh, you and the queer right. So then I <laughs> drink. Oh, you talk a little before you, before you, before you go. I think that I'm like that was my ending. That was all. <laughs> Mm. Do you know what came across really strongly for me is when looking at the relationships that were extended to her siblings, right? So I think of her male siblings particularly and the kind of room that was given for them to continuously make mistakes and to end human. I think about the ways in which black women are dehumanized from early childhood, right? So there is little yeah. birth, little width for you to to make mistakes. So of course, if you grow up yeah. being told that your brother can continuously make mistakes, but the kind of mistakes that you make are life altering and they change, they change the fabric of how people interact with you forever. Then of course, not only will you replicate that in your relationships with other women, you also replicate that in your relationship with yourself, right? And so for me, there was there was a powerful commentary in the book about about the ways in which black women are robbed of the ability to not only be kind to themselves in how they relate just with their mistakes and their errors and being human, but also what that then means for our relationships with each other moving forward. If you've been taught that as a woman, you can't be wrong, right? Like mm -hmm. to be wrong is to die and is to be killed um, 
in everybody's eyes, right? So like there's a moral death that you must suffer every time you make mistakes. But when your brother does things that your parents may not be proud of, there is room for him to continuously come back. And there's a kindness that is continuously extended to him. And I think that in the in the relationship with the siblings, it was so powerfully demonstrated. Like I needed a moment to sit and be like, how are these boys continuously allowed to be amazed? But my course is a mistress for existing, like just because she's there and she's she's queer, right? Just for existing as herself. Oh my goodness, she's already just been written out of the moral tapestry of this family. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting, Alma, because it connects with the question that I want to ask Tenji, right? I think there's a way in which you explore masculinity in the book, right? Like there's uh there are many layers of masculinity that you explore in the book, but one of the ways in is is the way in which masculinity is sort of shield certain people and doesn't shield other people. Mm -hmm. I think about the ways in which Tulani does not show up in the book, but Tulani is still the de facto head of the household, right? I think about mm -hmm. the way that Makosi's brothers mm -hmm. constantly fail, but in their mm -hmm. failure, they are always given chances to exist, right? And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm always curious about like the way in which masculinity protects certain types of people, right? And even how we co-opt the protection of certain types of people. So you think yeah. about how Duduzile in certain instances also shielded herself under the, the badge of masculinity. And I wanted some mm. of the reflections on that, right? Like just the idea of like how masculinity moves in different bodies and protects different bodies. I mean, <laughs> my personal relationship with masculinity, now all I say it, I love it. Um, I I love it. I I've never met and encountered such a fickle collective identity, such a weak. The word is weak, but weak, um, a very weak identity. So it's and so it's not just for me, um Utulan is to do Zule's father. Motherfucker, what? is wrong with you <laughs> why 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 are you why why um why are you this person why are you um doing this and <sighs> one of the things for me in the book that i do want to particularly with yes masculinities protect each other and i don't i don't i don't actually know that that's a conversation that is ever worthy of having if masculinities are still unwilling to engage uh, a conversation about them being um, toxic. So I don't know if then we can have a conversation about how they protect each other and when and how. Um, and I mean that even in the queer community um, yeah. amongst masculine identities. So, but what I do know is that I want to have a conversation with the ways in which it gets worse. Um, and so and I, I, don't want to go nice. I don't want to go masculinities face yourselves because then I must face myself and facing selves is a lot of work. Um, but I maybe want to go, you don't get better. You, the world doesn't expect better of you. And so you never become better and in your never become and this is specifically for for people like me in our in our lack of becoming better we are mimicking the men that have hurt the women that we have loved mm, come but on come on makosi hurts to do in the ways that her father has hurt her there are ways in which makosi meets non and, has, and hurts not in the way that not his father has. And what masculinity affords a lot of us who look a particular way and sometimes come in a particular body is leaving. That's another thing that Makosi may have possibly had to have had with herself, that she has, and she has the, 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 the social class of masculinity that allows her to travel and leave, which is what, but Tulani sits in it and lives in the house. When Duduzile takes on the masculinity, she's working hard. Masculinity affords leaving. And whereas feminine women often have to sit in the pain that we, or feminine people, 
sit in the pain of us leaving, coming back, hurting you, leaving, coming back, hurting you. And because masculinity is unwilling to have a conversation with each other, we're, we're a mess, dogs. Like, if I were to ever have a conversation, like, with masculinity, mas I don't know, that, like, you know that Machita list talk, song as a Machita that mask people are doing right now? Like, first of all, why do you want to be kept for for chilling? People chill all the time. Women, women, like, now that Machita ya chila, ni applause. And then if we were to do that, chat is that no, man, everything about our existence as masculine people is based on the misogyny um and in the in the con in the current in the current people can have prehistoric conversations people can have conversations about Ooh. african pre-colonialism but in the car in the current we're mm -hmm. Your we can actually okay. end the conversation here because I think <laughs> that was a jobs mic moment, right? It's like right there, right now, jobs mic moments. Uh, we're going to just read a few comments and questions because trust that Little Honol and I could go in all day about this. I'm going to open that. Cindy is going to make all the people on our live just be like, hashtag Sabawal, hashtag Cyril, Salu <laughs> Vule. Guys, please. Take it or leave it. There's a comment here from Bukamuso saying, Shoo, this discussion is making me make sense of so many things about Smakosi. Thank you. And I guess, have you found that to be a thing? Oh, there's a question here. There's a question from Baby Books. Question from a fan. Why won't there be more books from you? I choose health and peace. Mm. And no one ever wanted that for me. And writing books is not a peaceful thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, as lovers of all Gomorrahs are the same, we are hoping that in one way or another, um, books, books will find a way again to bring you peace. Because I, I think I am with the person who asked about the second book, but there's a comment here from Tabi Lengiti who says, Hi, I just want to say kudos to you, Sandra, for such a beautiful, convoluted and phenomenal book. Listen, on a on a Tuesday after hours, <laughs> <Malay> oh. <laughs> levels. <laughs> Thank you. Baby Books says that this was their favorite South African read of the year. Like they're calling it Smo July. They're already calling it. They really did. Book. And like, and then the, and then the nerves, man. Thank you. Thank you, Baby Books. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Overwhelmed, but thank you. You know, sometimes words are not enough. And Tenju, you said something about how English is just insufficient. Uh, so this person's just put fire emojis. One day they just put fire emojis. Because, listen. English is really expensive. So it's okay. We can save it. Uh, Lilith says that that opening is honestly war. Ha! Like, <laughs> ha! <laughs> and goes Lilith, thank you. Guys, we're overwhelmed, man. Over. Um, Cindy, these are just some of the comments that we wanted to share with you before we close. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. I mean, you and I and Alma will have another conversation, a more in-depth, more spoiler-filled, more dig deep, in-depth conversation for a podcast so people can check that out. But effectively, what we wanted to do today was sort of introduce people to sort of just the tentacles of the book, you know, just for them to get a little a dip inside and be like, okay, we want to get. And because, you know, we love you, we are the Cheeky Merchant. So the Cheeky Merchant has signed copies, signed by very own Utenji. So if you would like to get a copy, get in touch, get onto our website and then purchase a book and we will deliver it to you. Uh, and it will be signed by the author. Mm. It will be signed by the author. But That's once again, awesome. Tenji, um, if this is the only book that we get from you, thank you. Uh, mm. We hope it won't be the only book, but really thank you. Um, mm. I mean, you know how many times I've told you how I feel about all Gomorrahs are the same. Um, yes, and I just, I'm happy that people also feel that way because it's just been mm. such a beautiful, beautiful book um, mm. about queerness in the way that we haven't spoken about it yet in this country. So thank mm. you very much. 
Thank you. Thank you, Cheeky Natives. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the work you do for writers. Um, yeah, we didn't know that we could exist in the ways that we do. Thank you, thank you, thank you both for all the work that you do. Thank you so much, Sindria, for really what has been such a fire conversation. Thank you to everybody who joined us. Um, we really do appreciate it. And we'll appreciate it even more when you get your copy of All Are mm -hmm. the Same from the Cheeky from the cheeky Merchant. Support Black authors. Support the amazing work that, that writers like Tenju are doing. We can't wait. We'll see you all on Thursday for another live uh, episode with the Cheeky Natives. And good night, everybody. Keep safe and must have good night, Jamie. Good night. <laughs>